because this video is in such high demand, we decided to bump it up on the list and show you guys how we make our hot process soap. We are making soap. We are making some Valentine soap. Romeo and Juliet. And listening to our planet on the TV while we're working. There's a volcano or something going on. We like to add our lye to ice so that it doesn't get too hot when we're making it. When we make our soap, we actually do it hot process. That means that we actually just cook it in a karama pot for about an hour and then once it's cooled off it's actually ready to cut and use because I'm impatient. She is so impatient. <laughs> but in order to make it you're definitely going to need one of these. It is an emulsion blender. And it allows the oils and the lye water to mix properly together. I actually like it. It works really well. It's got a high and a low setting. It even came with a whisk attachment to the tip. A little egg beater. We don't really use that piece very often just because we bought it for soaping, but it's a good one. Works it's pretty good. well. We'll just put a link to it in the description for you guys. <laughs> When it comes to the oils used in soaping, there's a large variety of different oils out there. We will leave a list of the oils we used in these soaps in the description. Once they're melted, then you can add your lye mixture in. That's when the magic happens. Once all of your oils are nice and melted, you don't actually have to worry about the temperature at this point because you're cooking the lye. So you're gonna add your lye into the oils. I don't suggest doing it the way we do it because lye is caustic and can burn you. So gloves and eye protection are suggested. We uh, like to do a splash of vinegar in everything that had lye so that it deactivates any lye that may be left in it. And then you just mix it together a little bit and then you're gonna put the emulsion blender in. All right, and so when you put your emulsion blender in, you actually want to burp it. So you're gonna tap it along the bottom to help get any extra bubbles out of it. Cause whenever you put it in, it traps air underneath the little dome. And then you get started and you're gonna blend for about five minutes until it comes to trace. I didn't get a very good shot of that, but what it means to bring it to trace is where it kind of makes its own little trail on top of itself. You can see it kind of like makes lines on top of itself, almost like a really thin pudding. So now that it's to trace, we're gonna let it sit in the crock pot for about 15 minutes to start cooking. And then we're gonna come back and check it and stir it up. All right, it's the first time to check it and this is what you get. Sometimes it'll be more cooked and other times it'll be less cooked, but it'll just start cooking all the way around the edge and kind of fold over onto itself over and over. All right, so then you're just gonna take it and you're just gonna mix it and you can tell now that it's like really thick. It will thin up again. So right now it's almost, it, it kind of reminds me of lard or bacon grease whenever it's been saved, but it will 
it will get thin here soon and it'll almost it'll almost be like it's separated and that's it cooking the lye and it'll start looking like there's there's three stages it's applesauce which if you look right here real closely it's starting to kind of look like applesauce right in there you'll see it more here on the next stage but applesauce and then mashed potatoes and then the last stage is Vaseline when you get to the Vaseline stage that is when you know it's time to add in your scent and your coloring now we're gonna let that sit for another 15 minutes and come check it again also we already have our color all nice and pre-mixed I just use some mica powder and I like to use vitamin E oil to mix it it's you can mix it directly into the soap but it's kind of clumpy because it's a powder mixing into a liquid so I like to mix it with an oil beforehand and it makes it mix in nice and smooth with no clumps and all of the color mixes very well together right round two all right, so here you can tell it's folded over and it's got this little well in the middle here. And now it's really fluffy and light and airy. And this is, it's going to start getting into that applesauce stage really good. I don't know if you guys have ever made homemade applesauce. But it starts to kind of look like this where it has like that airy look and it kind of looks a little bit chunky with the apples in it when you're cooking it. We actually made some homemade applesauce this past year. We had a bunch of people give us some apples. And before they went bad, we decided to make a bunch of batches of applesauce. And we actually made some sugar-free applesauce for my grandma. And it was delicious. Okay, one to two more times, 15 minutes, just going to shut the lid, and the whole time we're doing this, it's going to cook on high, so another 15 minutes, and we'll come back and check it. The soap ended up cooking in three rounds versus the four, and if you look closely, you can see that natural sheen look that Vaseline will give you whenever you just rub across the soap and that tells you that it's ready to be turned off. At this point, you wanna check the temperature of the soap to make sure that it is not hotter than the flash point of the scent that you plan to use. We like to use essential oils, but you can also use fragrances bought at many different stores. Once you know that the temperature is good, you add in your scent and you mix it very, very well. Then the next step you're going to take is add in all of that color or you can leave it with no color and they still turn out just perfect. The different oils that you use can actually change the color of the soap. So when you add your colorant in, you may end up with a different color by the time you're finished mixing. This is the color that we got from that bright vibrant blue, but we are totally fine with the color. Then you're going to take it out of your crock pot and just kind of glop it into your mold. I usually pick up the crock pot and let it slide in for the most part and scrape the rest out, but with one hand, it's kind of hard to do that. All right, there it is. And now I'm gonna let it sit and chill. And once it's cooled down completely, I'll be able to pull it out and cut it. Okay, so now it's been a few days we actually cut the blue one and decided to make the pinkish red looking one. And now you're just gonna bevel, which I use a potato peeler and just peel the edges, but it's not a necessary thing to be making soap. It just kind of gives it a little more uniform on the edges and around the corners, so there's no pointy edges. But that's it. Now you just enjoy your wonderful soap. We actually sell all of the soaps that we make, so if you would like to purchase any of them, you can check out our link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up, 
subscribe down below and we'll see you guys on the next one. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.